I'm Claudia Catania, and you're listening to Playing On Air. You are about to hear Tennessee, written and directed by John Patrick Shanley. It features Timothée Chalamet, who starred in Mr. Shanley's play Prodigal Son on Broadway. In film, he stars in the feature adaptation of Andre Asiman's Call Me By Your Name. Tennessee also features Caitlin Fitzgerald. On stage, she has worked off-Broadway and regionally. In film, her credits include It's Complicated, Newlyweds, and Taking Woodstock. Television credits include Rectify and the role of Libby Masters in the series Masters of Sex. Tennessee was recorded and co-presented with the Jerome L. Green Performance Space at New York Public Radio in front of a live audience. And now, Tennessee. The year is 2012. We're in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, a suburb of Nashville. We see Dewey, a young woman in faded jeans, a checked man's shirt, beat-up sports jacket, sitting at an outdoor cafe table with a cup of coffee. A young man enters with a guitar slung over his shoulder. For a minute, he watches her, moving her hands in front of her eyes. What are you doing? Dancing. That's not dancing. Dancing's whatever I say it is. You're not doing nothing with your feet. Dancing, you use your feet. Why don't you get yourself a cup of coffee and your own table? Not very welcoming. You've got a chair. That seat's taken. By who? The opposition. My name's Mike. I don't have a name. Your name's Dewey. My name is an ache in my breast. (laughs) What? You said breast? You like tits better? Oh, jeez! Well, (laughs) haha! Shouldn't be surprised. You have a reputation. Am I living up to it? People think you're crazy. Do they? You talk to folks pretty big sometimes. They say. Big? Yeah. Yeah, and you point and wave your hands. They say. What do they say about you? You tell me. How would I know? I don't even know who you are. You know things. That's what I've heard. That's why I'm here. You hang out at this table a lot. Well, I might as well. I'm unemployed. Me too. But I could pay you. What do I need your money for? I already have coffee. I'm 19 years old. I dropped out of college two weeks ago. So? Well, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? What's it to you? College is my way out of Tennessee, but I couldn't hack it. It wasn't me. So I'm back with my parents, and they want me to work at some job at the mall. And if I do that, then that's it. That's my life. Maybe it is. What's with the guitar? I thought I might take it up, take lessons over in Nashville. What do you want to do, besides get out of Tennessee? I think I want to be you. Well, that's easy. You can't. The job's taken. You're the only original person in Mount Juliet. But you're not afraid. That's a big deal. I don't know. You're not on medication, are you? No. Good. I don't believe in that. You just got guts. Look at you. I mean, you dance with your hands. I'm dancing. With the opposition. Who's that? Whatever's not said is in the other chair. That's what I'm talking about. I read your post on Facebook this morning. I memorized it. A waterfall is a river broken in two. What is that? A poem, maybe? It has nothing to do with anything I hate, and I hate a lot of things. I feel like I'm in an invisible prison that's everywhere, but you're not in it. You're dancing with an unseen person. Some kind of phantom? Is it like magic you're talking about when you say that stuff about waterfalls? It's my answer to loneliness, I guess. You put your answer to loneliness on Facebook. How lonely are you? About the usual amount. Everybody's lonely. Well, why aren't you with somebody? I'd still be lonely. Are you sure? I was married. Loneliest thing I ever did. Maybe you was the wrong person. Or you were just too young. I was young. I mean, you're young now. (sighs) Yes. I want you to tell me my future. I know you do it. They say you saw Anacosta's car crash the day before it did and the big fire out on 24. If I'm so good at seeing disasters up ahead, why'd I marry a scumbag? Why did you? 
Cause knowing the future doesn't change the future, Mike. Mike, why did you say you were 19? You're 20. How'd you know that? Why'd you lie? I don't know. I, I didn't think I'd get caught. I guess I wanted you to think of me as a boy. 20 sounds mannish. You don't want to be a man? Not in this situation with you, no. Because? Well, you're kind of famous for two things. The first is being psychic. The second is for, uh... Being a lesbian? Yeah, you said it. I didn't. So, uh... I thought you might hate men, but... If I was a kid, maybe not so much. Well, I'm not a lesbian. That was a rumor started by my ex, and it's not true. You dress a little butch. If I sat out here in a sundress, I'd get no peace. Why'd he say you're a lesbian? My ex-husband is vain. He had to come up with a reason why I left him. He put it out there that I was into one of my students. Lost me the one job I liked. Teaching piano. It seemed like it might be true because you're never with anybody. No. How did you know a lot about my age? I'm sensitive. But you didn't lie because you thought I was a dyke. You lied because a teenager with a guitar he can't play goes down easier than a grown man with a guitar he can't play. Which is what we've got here. I heard you play with that band, Checkpoint. Uh, You had them raccoon eyes going on. Yeah, I used to like that haunted look. I quit Checkpoint almost two years ago. My ex was the lead guitar. He couldn't play either. So there's hope for me with this thing. (laughs) But I gotta backtrack to, I mean... Why would you get unhappily married if you knew beforehand? Did you know beforehand? Sure. And you didn't anyway? Absolutely. But why? People do that all the time. What else do you see about me? Why do you want to know? Because if this is it, if this is my life, if I'm going to be like my dad, marry my mom, and work at crap for 50 years, I want to know now. Why? So I can go ahead and kill myself. Well... That's one way out of Tennessee. I'll give you a hundred dollars to read me. (laughs) What'd you do? Sell your video games? Keep your money. Knowing the future doesn't change the future, but it changes you. I see a forest. A forest? A vast forest. You think this is your first life? I don't know. It isn't. You've been at this a long time. At what? Not much. Your name is Mike. You fractured your right ankle. You loved a girl named Patty. She moved away. Yeah, it broke my heart. Oh, no, she didn't. You broke hers. Bull. Did you or did you not mess with her sister? All right, yeah, I broke her heart. It's true. You can really do this. No harm done yet. Why why don't you go home? But you're on it. Everything you said about me was true. No, it's not true. It's nothing. You're worried about your future? (laughs) You don't have to worry about that. All that's happened so far, it's just noise. Made up stuff to keep you calm. You ever see the northern lights? The aurora borealis? In pictures? Picture that coming out of your skin. You have that around you right now, you don't see it. You know why you don't see it? Because you don't want to. You think your name's Mike and this life you've been living is real, but none of it is real. Not Tennessee, not none of it. You're not real. You wanna know your future? It doesn't matter. You don't know who you are, that's what matters. Because who you are is your future, and you were born somebody, and you don't know who that is, and you don't want to know. Oh, which is too bad. Because that's the job, Mike, as far as I can figure out. That is the damn job. Now, would you get out of here and leave me alone? You're pissing me off. What are you mad at me for? Because you are bad company. Come on, it's not my fault you're lonely. Oh, yes it is. You are so interested in what? Nothing. You think the answer to your life is a thing up ahead? 
winning the lottery, meeting some woman, playing that guitar, finding out you're a genius. Your future is right here, and you treat it like a diseased thing to cut out, to be pushed aside. That's why you dropped out of college. You'd rather kill yourself than meet yourself. Or me. Or anybody. You're bad company, Mike. That's why I'm lonely. Because the world is full of bad company. You're lonely because you've broken every mirror in sight. You're a stranger to your own heart. You don't know yourself at all. I'm lonely because I'm surrounded by people like you. You don't want me to tell your future. You want me to give you one. Man, you're, uh, you're harsh. Try dancing with your hands all day. I said I wanted to be you, but maybe I was wrong. Why would anyone want to be me? If you were me, you'd be where I am, sitting across from an empty chair. Well, who are you waiting to be in that chair? The opposition. Seems like I fit that bill. No! I'm waiting for a miracle of life. I'm waiting for love, Mike. Love is the opposition. Love is another person. You're not that. So... So go! <sighs> but you want to know, don't you? Have you seen my future now? I mean, do you know what's coming? Yes. Tell me. <sighs> Will you leave me to my company if I do? What company? My own. Will you leave me if I read you? Yeah. You're gonna lead a restless and unfinished life. An unacknowledged life until you die. And you are gonna live a very long time. You're gonna come back ten more times and never admit who you are. A coward. Finally, you're gonna come back as a tree so you can't run away anymore. You'll stand there for 178 years, and when you are at last cut down through the offices of divine mercy, you will be released from a near eternity of pointless struggle. You will embrace oblivion with profound gratitude, and you will not be alone. There are so many people like you. Forests and forests of you waiting to be cut down. It kills me. I did what I said. I read you, now go, please. You're wrong. About what? Me. Good. I think you probably are a dyke. You're probably right. A tree? You wanted to know. You know what? I hope you get cancer. <laughs> you know what? I won't, but you will. A few times. Go to hell! What do you think this place is? You saying this right now is hell? No. No, I'm being a dumbass. But if you're right in what you said, then why have I been given life? What's the point? I'm not right. You're not? It's a warning, okay? You have been warned. Stop looking for someone to tell you who you are. Go in as deep as you can. Come out with the goods, day after day. Or end up being a tree. The choice is yours. What about you? What's your future? I've seen it. The day will come. I will truly be in the company of another person, there. And I will be sitting in this chair as I am now, but through the offices of divine mercy and love, I will be changed. Now you listen to me. 
I'm going to be another person too. Okay. I'll see you on the other side. Fair enough. It's a rendezvous. <laughs> just heard Tennessee, written and directed by John Patrick Shanley. It featured Caitlin Fitzgerald as Dewey and Timothée Chalamet as Mike. So we are here with John Patrick Shanley and the cast of Tennessee. In Tennessee... Dewey talks often of the opposition and finally defines the opposition as love. What do you make of Dewey's assertion that love is the opposition? Caitlin? Oh, well. (laughs) Um, It's hard to think of the word opposition right now without thinking about our political climate. Um, But I think... But I think there's wisdom in that of, of, to me, true love is when you really honestly see another person and are seen by them. And, um, and I think that sort of frisson is what, to me, opposition means here. And maybe we can find that going forward with each other. How did she do, John? Well, I guess, you know, there's a way of looking at the world where you just sort of think of everybody and everything as an extension of yourself. And there's another way of experiencing life where other sensibilities hit you and change you. And I guess I call that opposition sometimes, and other times I call it company. And I go through, you know, fairly long periods where I don't feel like I have any company, uh, where it's just, you know, I say something, the other person says, uh-huh, uh, and, uh, or I don't agree. But we never enter a place where our spirits interact in a way that changes us both and moves us forward. And that's what I long for, what I pine for, and what I look at when I look at an empty chair. Dewey posts a poem on Facebook as an answer to loneliness. Playwright John Patrick Shanley, you also post poems on Facebook? I do. (laughs) I'm glad. Is the impetus loneliness, instant distribution, neither, both? Well, you know, I mean, I sort of see it as my job to express myself and to take some care with it because, you know, that's my particular vocation, um, to take care with it, you know. And other people, they have different ways of expressing themselves, minds and language, and, you know, to have another forum, uh, especially one that's free, is appealing to me Uh, and the constant pressure to come up with something is good for me. (laughs) In this short play, Tennessee, Dewey says to Mike, go in as deep as you can, come out with the goods day after day. Caitlin and, and Timothée, as, as actors, how do you interpret Dewey's advice? And John, how do you define the goods? That's Timmy's question. Whew. Yeah, man, that's a lot of what we've talked about. Fearless, fearlessly, fearlessly search within for what's good and what's bad and not, and not, and not being afraid of what's bad either, owning up to it and, and seeing the possible gifts and what's bad in you. John, it's a good thing for our show, Playing on Air, that you write so many short plays. Thank you. My pleasure. How, how is the short play form useful to you as a playwright? It's made me very wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I, in one way, I like to write short plays. It's sort of like test wells to see where the oil is. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, for instance, I, I wrote a full-length play outside Mullingar uh, a while back, uh, and uh, I, that started as a one-act uh, where I suddenly went, I have a lot more to write 
on this particular in this particular form and with these particular characters uh, and it's uh, you know and it's a meditation and meditation should be of the length that they are and not the length that's dictated by society or anything else and also let's face it all of our attention spans were shattered long ago and these little bits of things are easier <laughs> In Tennessee also, Mike says to Dewey, why would you get unhappily married if you knew beforehand? And Dewey answers, people do that all the time. John, if you agree with your character and your experience, why do you think it is that we do it all the time? Uh, I guess I would just start with that we do do it all the time. Uh, and you're always hearing people, you know, they're going through a divorce. It's like, I knew... The, you know, the a second date when I put my, he got upset and I put my hand on his shoulder and he pushed my hand away. That was the whole marriage. How long were you with him? 15 years. <laughs> it's like, okay. Knowing the future doesn't save you from, uh, from anything because we are irrational creatures. And, you know, to, to go back to the election, you know, this was a very emotional election. The outcome, the ingo, all of it, very emotional and it's very emotional now and I'm like okay I'm waiting for the dust to settle and reason to return so we can have a coherent conversation and find a, a way forward that is healthy for society um, but uh, we do many of our biggest decisions in life for emotional reasons that are destructive and um, Marriage comes falls under that aegis, <laughs> and so do elections. <laughs> On that merry note, we've been speaking with playwright director John Patrick Shanley, and actors Caitlin Fitzgerald and Timothée Chalamet. You've been listening to Playing On Air, great short plays with great actors. Theme and play music by Tom Cochan. Tennessee was recorded and co-presented by the Jerome L. Green Performance Space at New York Public Radio. Recording engineer, Chase Kulpon. Live engineer, Gaines Lagar. Studio technician, Milton Ruiz. Technical director, Ricardo Fernandez. Production director, Utsuki Atsuka. And stage manager for playing on air, Arabella Powell. Mastering and sound design by John Kilgore. Sasha Spitzer, assistant producer. Literary and development associate, Lucy Fleming. Distributed by PRX. Visit our website at playingonair.org or Facebook or Twitter and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. And while you're there, leave us a review. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. I'm series producer Claudia Catania. Thank you.